Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. From now through May 6th, if you use that promo code, you will automatically be entered into a drawing to win a War of the Spark booster box. See the description below for details. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and this is the end of week two of War of the Spark previews. We're going to recap and analyze all the cards that were revealed in the last 24 hours or so. And as always, if you're curious as to the sources, just check out the description below. With that out of the way, let's get going. Niv-Mizzet Reborn. Now, this was leaked a little over a week ago, so we did talk about this in another video. I'll go kind of quick today. I do want to say this, though. This is a very sweet card. It's a huge story point as well. 6-6 six, six, flyer for 6. It does cost one of each color. Could you play this in standard? I'm not going to say it's out of the question because you do have the possibility with Chromatic Lantern out there to maybe make a control deck that's running five colors or perhaps just like a Super Friends deck or something like that. If that's the case, especially with the split cards that are out there that are multiple colors, this could become very, very interesting. So Maybe it gets there. Could be a long shot, but it's something to watch. Definitely, though, if it doesn't work out in standard, get a copy of this for Commander. It's legendary. It could be your Commander, and you could have a lot of fun with this card in a five-color deck. Bond of Discipline. So this is a limited card, sure, but it's a very, very good one. There appears to be a cycle of these bonds, actually. So this one kind of feels like sleep in some ways. Tap all creatures your opponents control. For the casting cost of five at sorcery speed, this is definitely a drafter sealed card, like I said. But this could close out a game, and whenever you're building those limited decks, you want to make sure you have ways to get past board stalls. And even if you don't win the game for some reason, you don't have to worry as much about the crackback because you had the lifelink on your creatures when they went in there for damage. Pretty awesome card at Uncommon. Bond of Insight. Here's another one of these bonds, and I don't think this one's going to be a big standard card either. I mean, barring a really good mill deck in the format, but that's a long shot. Aside from that, though, I do think it will be fine in Draft Your Seals. The thing is, even if I don't have that many instant or sorcery cards, just maybe reoccurring one of my removal spells might be just good enough. And also, the mill to my opponent could be a little more relevant considering even if I have just a few other mill cards in my deck, they only have 40 cards typically, so you might actually put some pressure on them. I would play this in Commander too. I think there's a lot of decks that would be happy to pull some of their instants and sorceries back. Contentious Plan. Okay, this maybe has an outside chance of seeing a tad bit of standard play. Here's the deal. It's sorcery speed, so it's slow. It only costs two, though, and it does cantrip. If you have a deck that really, really, really cares about proliferate, maybe that's like a Super Friends deck or something like that, the cantrip could push this into playable territory. Just because if your board state isn't conducive to proliferating at that moment, you could always pay the two to draw a new card. And that's not perfect, but it's not the worst thing in the world either, as opposed to a card that's just going to be dead in your hand, right? Now, outside of maybe that slim chance in standard, I would say that this is a great card for Drafter Sealed. Again, it's at common. You can probably pick it up a little bit later in a draft pack. If proliferate's important to you, which many times it will be wonderful. And again, that cheap cantrip is going to be very nice. God Eternal Kefnet, another mythic, another zombie god, another push card. Imagine that. This one costs four, 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 five, flyer. Yeah, you have me already, but it does more than that, of course. It has that same persistence clause that the other gods have, which is nice. And with this one out, you might have a chance to copy some of your instant and sorceries and play them at a reduced cost throughout the game. This is super sweet for the mana you're putting into it. This will see standard play, maybe in some kind of tempo build. Probably a number of different decks actually could use something like this. In modern, I'd want to test it out in scape shift. I think it might actually be pretty decent there. And of course, it is a limited bomb as well. It should be being a mythic. If you're lucky enough to open this, even if you don't have that many instant or sorcery spells in your deck, don't worry, because the 4-5 flyer that is persistent is going to be good enough for 4. Commander, you'll love it there too. You'll be copying all sorts of crazy instants and sorceries at a reduced cost with this thing. And again, it is legendary, so it could be your commander. Jace's Triumph. This is a divination with upside to it. And divination has seen standard play in the past, so I do think this card could see some standard play. And if a Jace is prevalent in the format, and that's very likely at this point, then yeah, this gets even better. And this will also be good for you in Drafter Seal. Divinations are always good in that format. Don't worry if you don't have a Jace. Toll of the Invasion. Now these three casting cost cards that let you dig into your opponent's hand typically aren't great in standard because they are a little too expensive, but they can still be good in limited. It just depends on your deck and what you're trying to do. 
This one also staples a mass one to it. So if you're all in on a mass or you're just playing more of a controlling build, this will be fine for you. Finale of Promise. This is a sweet card. This one's a mythic. Now think of it this way. It's two red and X. So it is very versatile. You could put this in a deck like a Is It Drake deck or Phoenix deck and just try to call back a couple of the cheap instant and sorcery cards found in the graveyard. And that won't cost you that much. Or you could throw this in more of a mid-rangey or larger like big red deck and maybe call back some bigger instant and sorceries. So I do think this does see play in standard in some capacity. However, that last part of the card about getting X up to at least 10 will be most relevant in Commander. You actually get to copy each of those spells twice. And you know, there could be some very powerful instants and sorceries in your graveyard in that format. Bond of Flourishing. I like this card. This is another one of those bonds that is sorcery speed. Only costs two, though, and it's hard to miss with this card. You look at the top three cards of your deck and you get to pull a permanent. That means, especially in green, you most likely will be hitting something. And you also gain a little life off of it. I think it just might squeak by and see a tad bit of standard play in the right deck, perhaps. A deck that maybe cares about what their draws are. They're trying to find a particular card, perhaps like a Nexus of Fate build or something like that. I'd at least test it there. But aside from that, another card that will be good for you and limited to help you find what you need when you need it. Early in the game, it can help you dig for lands. Later in the game, it can help you dig for heat. Centaur Nurturer. Interesting Mana Dork here. This is more for Drafter Sealed, though, with 2-4 for 4, so it's got a little size behind it, a little bit defensive, which is nice. Also, you gain 3 life, which is good against aggressive builds, and it taps for a mana of any color, so it ramps you out, fixes color. Yeah, I'm going to play this and be very happy with it. Really interesting common here that's going to help you build out maybe some of these multicolored decks or ramp into some of these big, crazy spells we've been seeing. Pledge of Unity. I actually like this one, too, because it is an instant. Kind of feels like a combat trick. Yeah, and this is another card I would at least test out in Standard. Maybe try it out in Selesnya Tokens or a deck running Simic Ascendancy, perhaps? It is dependent on board state, and it does cost you three, but I do think there might be at least room for a copy or two and some builds out there occasionally. In Drafter Seal, this will be a good uncommon for you. It works with Proliferate, builds out your army, gains you a little life if you need to defend against a more aggressive build. It does a lot, and it's cheap and fast. I might even consider this in like a Selesnya Tokens deck for Commander. Firemind Vessel. I think, unfortunately, this one is a little too slow, a little too expensive for standard. I love the ability here, though. Tap to add two mana of different colors. I think it's just coming a little bit too late in standard games. Now, outside of standard, you'll find places to play this. Drafter Sealed, you're going to love this card, especially if you're trying to get a little more greedy on colors, which might be very likely in this environment. Or maybe you just want to ramp out into some big late game plays. This will help you do that, too. In Commander, this is another great mana rock that can fit into any build. That covers the cards for today. Now, as we enter the weekend, previews will most likely come to a halt. Sometimes something will come out late and show up on the weekend. If it is a big card, I will report it out to you. If not, I'll just roll it into Monday's preview videos. Tomorrow, Saturday, we will do our market watch as we always do. You don't want to miss that one. But until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.